Welcome everyone to lecture number 46, our continuation of chemistry, part four. Today we're just going to do a brief discussion of what's called the stock system and talk a little bit about transition elements. That's the group B stuff we've been ignoring. Remember we just did ionic bonds, everything group A. So I'm just going to tell you very little about group B. If this was a uh, serious in-depth chemistry course, we'd talk a lot more about it, but I'll just tell you what we need to know. Okay, the group B elements on a periodic table are called transition metals. Transition metals have valence electrons. Valence electrons are the ones uh, that are used in bonding. We've been saying they're the outermost shell, but in transition metals, it turns out that uh, the uh, valence electrons can be in more than one shell. So we've only discussed the S and the P orbitals. Remember S electrons, P electrons, or my hospital analogy of surgery and proctology. Okay, but there's actually much higher energy levels or uh, electron energy levels. Uh, so beyond S and P, there's D and F and G and all this stuff. And it turns out uh, more complicated elements can have electrons, valence electrons, in two different shells at the same time, still being in the lowest energy state. So these transition metals can have different oxidation numbers. Remember oxidation number group 1A was always plus one, group 2A was always plus two, group 3A always plus three, group 5A always minus three because it wanted eight, group 7A always minus one. The uh, transition uh, elements, the group B, can have different oxidation numbers. I'm going to talk briefly, and you should learn these names, uh, uh, two particular examples, copper and uh, iron. Okay, so let's look copper if it's in the oxidation state plus one, if it wants to give one electron, we call that copper one. That's not too bad, right? Oops. Uh, also called cuprous ox. Okay, so uh, copper plus two is called copper two, and it's given the name cupric. And iron has two oxidation states also plus two, that's called iron two, or ferrous, and iron three, or ferric. OK, so, for example, oxygen, remember, oxygen is in group 6A, so it needs two electrons. Cu2O is telling me, I'm going to write here, is telling me that copper has a plus one charge there, and this is minus two. So if copper is plus one, this is copper one oxide or cuprous oxide. CuO, copper is in the plus two state. Oxygen's in the minus two state. One copper with one oxygen, so that's copper two, that's the oxidation, copper two oxide or cupric oxide. And the same for iron, right? Fe, if it has plus two, oxygen's minus two, that would be iron two oxide or ferrous oxide. And if iron had a plus three state, oxygen minus two, this now gives six electrons, two times minus three, and this takes six electrons. So this would be called iron three oxide or ferric oxide, or more commonly, this is called rust. Okay, so iron three oxide is rust or ferric oxide is rust. All three are synonyms. All right, so let's do uh, simple problems. Okay, so the number in parentheses, Roman numeral, in the stock system is telling you the oxidation state of that transition metal. Okie doke, so let's see. Mercury two phosphide, H, G, plus two, Phosphide, remember, ide is just the element. I try to fool you. P has a minus three. So if we put a three there and a two there, now I can erase the oxidation numbers, and there's mercury two phosphide. Okay, let's do cobalt three nitrate. Cobalt three nitrate is CO, the charge is plus three. How do I know the charge of cobalt-3 is plus 3? Because I'm telling you, it's plus 3, stock system. Nitrate is NO2 with a minus 1 is the oxidation number. This gives three electrons. This needs one electron. So we need three of these to one of those. So I can erase that one. And I can also, oopsie, erase the oxidation numbers now. So this is cobalt-3 nitrate. Cool. Nickel three sulfate. Okay. 
N I. What's the charge? It's three. Sulfate is SO4 with a minus two. That's one of the polyatomics. Nitrate is a polyatomic. This gives three electrons. This needs two electrons. So we do two and three. Take away the oxidation number. And there you have it. The formula for nickel three sulfate. See? Very, very simple. So the, the stock system is telling us what the charge of the group uh, B transition element is. Cadmium, what is that? CD, four plus four. Phosphate is PO4 minus three. We have to learn these, these polyatomics. So this gives four electrons. This takes three electrons. It's like fi finding a common denominator, right? So come on, you could do this. It's easy, right? So if I multiply this by three, now this gives 12 electrons. Take four of these phosphate ions. This takes four uh, uh, I'm sorry, this takes 12 electrons. Once again, I'll erase the oxidation number. And this would be the formula for cadmium four phosphate. So in one of these molecules, notice there's three cadmium atoms, four phosphates, and 16 oxygens. You see four is outside the parentheses. All right, titanium hydroxide. Titanium three, so it's plus three. Hydroxide is OH. The oxidation number is minus one, needs one electron. So titanium gives three. This needs one. I need one titanium, three hydroxides. It's good. I'll use an eraser now. And so I can erase the oxidation numbers and erase the one. And there's titanium, three hydroxide. Okay. Lead three carbonate. Okay. So PB plus three carbonate CO3 minus two is the oxidation number, gives three, needs two. Once again, common denominator, if you like, is six. So if we put a two there and a three here, the lead now is giving six electrons. The carbonate is taking six electrons. We can erase the oxidation numbers. Keep the three there because there's three carbonate ions. So one lead three carbonate molecule has two lead atoms three carbon atoms and nine oxygen atoms because the three is outside the parentheses. All right, rubidium, what is that, RU? I don't know, I'm making these up. I don't know if they really exist and I'm trying not to anger the chemists, but these are just exercises, okay? So R, U, and the oxidation number I put was five. Sulfate we know is SO4 and it has a negative two charge, right? The oxidation number is two. Okay, so this gives five. This needs two. How do we, well, the common number that you can do or common denominator would be 10. So if I put a two here and a five here, now the rubidium gives 10 electrons. The sulfate ion takes 10 electrons. I can erase the oxidation numbers. And there we have rubidium 5 sulfate, Ru2, SO4, parenthesis 5. And finally, cupric nitride. Ah, I'd. Be careful. Don't, let, don't, don't be fooled by the IDE. Whenever the ending is IDE, it's just the element, not the polyatomic. So uh, cupric means it's Cu plus 2, right? Cupric was plus 2. And nitride. N is minus three, okay? Cupric is the plus two state, nitride. Nitrogen is in group five, so it needs three electrons. So the common number is six, two. So copper gives six electrons, nitrogen takes six electrons. I can erase the oxidation numbers with my finger as I hold the eraser in this hand because I'm not that bright. And there's the formula for cupric nitride. OK, so whenever I give a, a problem or an example or a test question uh, dealing with the transition elements, the group B elements, it will always be in the stock system. I will not try to have you guess what the oxidation state is for a group B element. I will tell you uh, using the stock system by putting the numbers in parentheses, the oxidation number. OK, and then we treat it just like we did the uh, all the other ionic compounds, okay? So that's not so bad. So we've done
pretty much everything with ionic. Remember, ionic compounds give and take. So you have two ions. If you give, you're a cation. If you take, you're an anion. So we have two ions together. Okay. The next thing we'll talk about in the next lecture is two nonmetals sharing electrons. We're going to share, not give, not take, but share electrons. Okay. So see you next time. Be well, stay safe. Peace.